seated where she might be nurtured for a short time. Our brother. Oh, we all have chances. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to OCN um, Broadcasting, OCN University and Remote Area Ministries, Nikki Ogamba. Bishop Nikki Ogamba has made this possible that we can come to you this way. And actually, it's the Word of God has made this possible. I come in the name of Jesus. I'm going to pray just quick a minute. Thank you, Jesus, for all these people that have tuned in wherever they are. We're all over the world, Lord Jesus. We believe that you have opened a door for this teaching about you. It's crucial for these last days. So I thank you, Father, that you're making a way. Oh, nothing is too difficult for you. You are opening doors that no man can shut. So I thank you, Lord. You are a gracious God. So I bless these people that have tuned in. I thank you that computers, whatever, are working properly and that they, your Holy Spirit is, um, is uh, just abiding with them and in them and that you're, uh, you're giving them new revelation of your kingdom, of your love, that you live in them. So thank you, Jesus. So as we look at what you did for us, Lord, and help us to be appreciative anew that your grace is sufficient to cover all of these things. You took our sins and paid the price so that we can spend time with you in glory. So bless these dear people in your precious name. So hallelujah, here we are again. We're going to be talking about the death of Jesus. That's why we have this background here, because I want you to remember, I need to keep remembering, oh, all that he did for us. Oh, the John and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all have the Gospels there talking about what Jesus did for us. And the little details, one a Gospel has a different detail. John has actually more details of, of the things that Jesus said. So we're going to go through this, and um, I just believe you're going to get a new revelation and a new appreciation. God is so good. So I want to start out with chapter 18. That's on our slide here. And I just want to say that I have used Jensen's survey of the New Testament. Uh, he's written books on the Old Testament and on the New Testament. He's a real scholar. And so I've gone through there because there is an outline there of the trials of Jesus on page 194 of his book. And um, because this is interesting, the Jewish trial, and you see the Roman trial, we bring up that slide, uh, 21, uh, Jewish trial before Annas, and that's in Matthew 18, and then at Matthew 19, and then the informal trial by the Sanhedrin before dawn. Oh, before dawn, the people weren't even uh, around there, but this Matthew talks about it. Uh, let's see, Mark talks about it, and Luke talks about it. And then there was a formal trial after dawn. Matthew talks in Mark and Luke. I have all these references. And then he made to uh, go before Pilate with a Roman trial. First appearance before Pilate. And it's explained in all of these references here. And then before it, Herod Antipas. Um, and uh, it's interesting there. And then the final appearance before Pilate. And as you look at them, there's six trials there. Oh, goodness, Lord Jesus. Oh, the, 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 all through the, uh, before the dawn, you know, uh, it was uh, illegal. But anyway, he did it. He went through this. And there's so much in there that will remind us how much he did for us. During the time of these trials, Jesus is mocked. He's spit upon. He's beaten severely. 
and the crown of thorns is put on his head and probably pushed down and they put a robe on him. Oh, they did such horrid things to him. Oh, but Jesus, he knew it was coming. That's why he came into the world. Oh, and he, you know, even, uh, like I said, uh, where was that in the book of Hebrews? Yet for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. We're going to have to go through some trials too, but for, there's going to be a joy set before us, not just in heaven and the, and the sweet by and by. It's now here on earth that we're going to get some joy. We're ke keeping our focus on Jesus, keeping our focus. So he had a hard time there, but I want to now just concentrate on a scripture um, because healing is one of my, the things that is, is the biggest thing in my heart because I want you to know that you can be set free from sickness. And that's why I, I brought up this Isaiah 53, verse 4. Surely our griefs. Now, in the Hebrew, that word means, uh, is, means malady. The Hebrew word is koli, means malady or sickness. Because in our traditional church, it said, oh, just our our, our, our uh, mental things that he took care of. But actually, in the, in the Hebrew, which the Old Testament was written in, you look that up, and it means sickness. Surely our sickness he himself bore. And our sorrows, that's another one, makoba means pain. To go back to the Hebrew, he carried. Our sorrows he carried, yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of God and afflicted, but he was pierced through for our transgression and by his scourging, which means stripes, we are healed. So Jesus, I believe, saw that, that the price for sin was going to be paid and that our sickness would be taken away of. By his stripes, 1 Peter 2, 24 says, by his stripes we are healed. You know, actually, this was done before the world was created. Oh, if Satan had known what was going to happen, he would have left Jesus alone. We've read somewhere. If he didn't know all that was going to happen, he thought he had had the victory when he crucified Jesus. And the scribes and the Pharisees thought, oh, we'll get rid of this guy. But by his stripes, you were healed. It hasn't ended. Before the creation of the world, it was accomplished. That sin penalty was taken care of, but it had to be walked out. Jesus had to make himself, he became man so that we could identify with him and so he could pour himself into his disciples, knowing that he was going to leave. He poured himself into them. He washed their feet. And then Mary uh, broke that uh, flask of perfume over him to anoint his body for his burial. So many things. But he gave to us the ultimate sacrifice. Oh, if you've ever seen The Passion of Christ, it is actually so gruesome, it's, it's hard to even watch. Oh, but Jesus did that for us. You wonder how he in the world could even carry that cross that's up there. How could he carry that up there? Uh, the Cyrene, uh, the, who is it? The um, man from Cyrene came to carry it for him. You'd think, well, he must have lost so much blood. He surely would have passed out. But he didn't. He was able to go there. And then he goes, they carry him up to Golgotha, put the stakes in his hands, actually in his wrists here. I, I don't believe in this. Otherwise, it, would, um, it wouldn't have held him in, uh, uh, in his feet. And uh, But then, you know, there was the, that lightning and there was the earthquake. And it was dark from about 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Oh, because they were all making fun of Jesus. And actually, the darkness was a, a, a blessing from the Father. And they, they couldn't see him then. And they began to tremble in that passion of Christ. If you've seen that, that movie, oh, that is portrayed well. Oh, there was actually some lightning that hit that cross when Jim Caviezel was on there. You've heard his testimony. Uh, they depicted it very well. Supernatural things happen because he bore our stripes. He bore those stripes, our sins there, because God couldn't look at sin. 
He looked at it in Jesus and then the, the darkness and it was all taken away. All of those sins that we've done, past, present, and future, and by his stripes you are healed. So you do not need to suffer from sickness. It may be temporary, um, but you go to God, say, why is this here? Have I opened the door? There are natural reasons if we haven't taken care of our body, eaten properly, anger, bitterness, unforgiveness in our hearts. Um, those things will manifest themselves in sickness. So I just believe right now that you have been suffering from sickness. Many that are hearing my voice, that you will understand Jesus took your sickness on himself. Isaiah 53, verse 4. Surely your sickness he himself bore and our sorrows, which are pains, he carried. He was pierced through for our transgression and by his scourging, his stripes, we are healed. And Peter, 1 Peter 2, 24, says, by his stripes we were healed. Oh, I guess I got our healed. No, in one of the uh, translations, this says you were healed. So depend on that. And we, we've got a big job to do, dear ones, and we don't need to be sick. <laughs> Satan wants us to be sick. He's a thief. He's come to rob, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came to give us an abundant life. And there's so many other scriptures. I have a divine nature. First Peter, I think it's two, I can't remember right now, but I have a divine nature in me. I have his DNA. You have his DNA. I declare that in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, thank you. So he's before Pilate. And our next slide here, chapter 18, verse 36, Pilate questions him. Oh, are you the king of the Jews? Uh, and Jesus does answer him and says, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would be fighting that I might not be delivered up to the Jews. He's saying, my kingdom, there's another kingdom, another kingdom, dear ones. Do you know that we are in another kingdom? We're in this world, but we're not of this world. We have a passport to another kingdom by the blood of Jesus. Oh, he paid for our sins. We have his robe, robe of righteousness. So anyway, then in chapter 19, it says, they took Jesus bearing his own cross to the place of the skull. I talked about that. There they crucified him with two men, one on either side. And Pilate wrote in the scripture, Jesus the Nazarene, the king of the Jews. Uh, and, and one of the gospels, I can't remember which one, it talked about the thieves that were there. One thief uh, said, um, you know, I am guilty. Father, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. The other thief did not confess his sins. Uh, so Pilate wrote on there, let's see, verse 26, Jesus, this is chapter 19 now. Jesus, seeing the disciple whom he loved, said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. We don't know where Joseph was at this time. But anyway, he's saying to John, his beloved disciple, take care of, of the mo my mother or his, the woman. He calls him woman. You know, he still honored her, but woman, behold your son. Later, Jesus cries out, I am thirsty. Even later, so let's see. Oh, I wanted to say, too, when he went to Herod, he didn't answer a single thing. Herod was mocking him, spit on him, and gave him a, uh, the, the, uh, the robe, made fun of him. It was absolutely horrid. So Jesus didn't say a word to Herod, but he did answer to Pilate. Oh, Pilate, he's going to be held accountable. I don't know. I hope he made it into heaven. Let's see, uh, Jesus cries, I am thirsty. We are in chapter 19. Uh, and then later he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. The Jews, therefore, because it was a day of preparation so that the bones should not remain in the cross on the Sabbath, uh, asked Pilate that their legs might be broken. Uh, but they did not break Jesus' bones. Because when they came to him, they found that his, uh, uh, he was already dead. They didn't put the, the uh, let's see, they cast lots for his robe. This was all scripture that was going to be fulfilled. And they did not break his bones because it said way back in um, 
I think that's uh, Psalm 22. It says, not a bone of his body would be broken. Psalm 22 has many of the things that Jesus said on the cross. And David had a revelation of some of these things. Oh, so Jesus was there for you and for me. Oh, and he, he was thinking of his mother, his earthly mother. And before he left, he was thinking of you and me, wasn't he? He said, I did my job. I protected them, sanctify them. Let them be one as we are one, that I am in them and they are in me. He came by his spirit in us, in us to sanctify us in the truth. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay, but then, um, let's see, who is it? Uh, Nicodemus or... Who is it? Goes and asks Herod, Joseph, um, Arimathea, goes and asks Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. Pilate granted permission, came there and took away the body. Nicodemus came also and he brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 100 pounds weight. So they wrapped the body of Jesus, wrapped it, and they put it in his, uh, who is it? Uh, Joseph's new tomb. New tomb. And, oh, that was prophesied, too. I think that was uh, David that knew that he was going to be in a new tomb. <laughs> okay, the tomb, they laid Jesus there, and then they ro rolled a big stone in front of it, and then uh, Pilate, or uh, I think it was Pilate, remembered that Jesus had said he was going to raise after three days, so he put a guard around there put a guard around there and sealed that tomb to make sure that the disciples wouldn't come and steal the body away and say, oh, Jesus rose. So he put the rock, the, the big rock there and the stone that would, uh, was so heavy, nobody could by themselves could roll it away. So the days passed and Jesus, well, first Peter talks, or is it second Peter talks about Jesus, went down into the depths of the earth and declared triumph, that he had triumphed over those enemies. He had triumphed over Satan, and he led captives free. Some were held there, but Jesus paid the price so that we could be free. And those captives that were held there, uh, I don't understand, all of that went on those days when Jesus was in the tomb, but his spirit traveled, and he defeated Satan, showed Satan that he was defeated. He was defeated. And then he rose again. We are in now chapter 20. Resurrection of Jesus. And we have this next slide here. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the tomb and find, found the stone rolled away with the angel sitting on the stone. Matthew goes into more details uh, of what the angel said. The angel says, oh, well, who are you looking for here? And, he, and, and uh, Mary says, oh, I'm looking for Jesus. Oh, and he said, he is not here. He is risen, even as he said. Go and tell his disciples. And Mary is so flabbergasted. She does, does run away. I don't know which Mary it was, because there is another Mary that stayed there in the garden. Uh, Mary ran to tell Peter and John, declaring the tomb was empty. Both the disciples come, go inside the tomb, finding the linen wrappings. But Mary, I'm going to the next slide, encounters Jesus in verses 11 through 18. Mary weeps and looks into the tomb and sees the angels inside who ask her why she's weeping. She continues weeping in the garden. I said the angel said he's not here for he's risen. Go tell his disciples. She continues weeping in the garden, but senses someone standing by her. She turns around and sees someone who she supposes to be the gardener. He also asks her why his, she is weeping. And Jesus says, Mary. She answers, Rabboni, which means master. Jesus says, stop clinging to me. My Bible says clean, the New American Standard, but the King James Version says, Touch me not, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. I think this is so tender. It's my Father and your Father, my God and your 
your God and my brethren. So he, he says, we are one. My God, your God, my Father, your Father, my brethren. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. That was, it just blessed me as I read that again. Thank you. So Jesus, oh, he appears to the disciples. This is Thomas's absent. This is chapter 20. Still, still here, Jesus appears. Uh, Thomas is absent at that time when Jesus appears in their midst, showing them his hands and his feet. Jesus says, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. This I claim. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. <coughs> oh, we're going to go in his power. We're going to go in his power. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, your sins have been forgiven them. If their sins have been forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, their sins have been retained. I don't quite understand that. But anyway, and then receive the Holy Spirit. Um, but they still had to go through Pentecost. They had to go to the upper room and receive that power to come upon you. So they got some measure of the Holy Spirit at that time. I don't know if it was in them or on them, but when they went to, when they went to uh, Jerusalem, then uh, they did receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The power engulfed them, filled them, baptized them, filled them up. So when Thomas heard of this encounter that Jesus had been there, he was very doubtful. And so Jesus appears again eight days later, and Thomas sees the, the scars in his hands, and he says, my Lord and my God. Thank you, Jesus. And, and then it says in that scripture, blessed is he who does not see but still believes. I, I claim that for myself. I believe. I, I see him by my spirit. And I, I, I've seen some things in dreams, and I've seen some other things, but... Uh, you are blessed. He's going to disclose himself to you in a new way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now we got some other things to talk about. Okay. Um, this was um, here, verse 31. These had things have been written. This is John saying uh, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. This I went back to. This was the key verse. These things are, believe, are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ and that you may have life in his name. So you've studied this. I believe you got some new life today. I've got some new life as I've been able to study it. And I'm strong in the power of his might. You are strong in the power of his might. Okay, there's only one more incident we need to talk about. Uh, Jesus appears to the disciples, particularly Peter, at the Sea of Galilee. The disciples return to fishing. Jesus appeared standing on the shore and instructs them to cast their net on the other side of the boat. They obeyed, and their net was very full. Peter throws himself into the sea to meet Jesus. The others stay in the boat and get to shore. They find a fire going with fish and bread. Jesus serves them fish and bread. But then he speaks to Peter. Remember, Peter went out and wept bitterly, didn't he? Because he had said he wouldn't deny Jesus, but yet he did. So Jesus right away talks to Peter. Simon, that's his other name, son of John, do you love me more than these? Do you love me? What does he mean, more than these people or these fish? Oh, he's saying, do you love me more than these? And Peter replies, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He gives the word phileo, you're my friend. Jesus says, tend my lambs. After Jesus' next question, Jesus says, shepherd my sheep. Jesus again says, do you agape me? This is the second time Jesus says, agape me. And Peter says, oh, you know that you are my friend, phileo. I do love you. And Jesus says, shepherd my sheep. And then he asked Peter again. Jesus says, tend my sheep. And Jesus used agape. And Peter still, he says, Phileo, I do love you. You know that I love you. So I'm saying this to you and to me today. Do I love him? Am I willing to follow him? No matter what the cost is, I'm willing to say, well, I got this much money or I got this much time. What do you want of it? Thank you, Jesus. He is here. He is here to bless you. 
He is here to bless you. Remember, and um, let's see, that was John 17. He said that we and the Father are one and that he is in us. He blesses us, that we are one, that he loves us. The Father loves us as he loved the Son. And that's why Jesus went out of his way to speak to Peter, to make Peter know he was forgiven. He loved him. He agape, agape love. That's the kind of love we need to have, agape, for the world. And going into, into hell. Oh, judgment is coming on the world. Quickly, we've fallen away so far from Jesus. Even the church, the church needs to wake up and say, oh, we've been, uh, we've been in, involved in so many other things, but we haven't in, been involved in praying. We haven't been involved in denying ourselves and, and preparing for your coming. Oh, yes, people have loved others, but they haven't been, had, a, had the power. They haven't had the boldness to say, well, if you don't repent, you know, Jesus loves you, but you need to change your way of life because there is a judgment coming. There is a hell. In fact, I heard one time a pastor said, Jesus talked about hell and the judgment more than he did about eternal life. And I thought, well, I didn't <laughs> look that up. But anyway, I believe it. He did talk about the wedding feast and the, the um, cast them out to outer darkness and, oh, um, many other times he referred to the judgment. Oh, we don't want to speak judgment. I say the Holy Spirit is going to convict you of sin, righteousness, and judgment, and that he wants to give you joy. We read that. He wants to give you joy. He wants to give you an abundant life, and that doesn't mean just money. It means... Uh, Prosperity in your spirit so that when things, calamities come, which they are, bad weather patterns, we see that happening in the United States and in other countries, tornadoes and floods and all sorts of things. And there may be earthquakes. Oh, but Jesus is going to um, take care of you. He's going to bring you to heaven, his glory the glory of the Lord is going to be your rear guard. That's in Isaiah 58. If we're doing this and sharing ourselves, sharing our bread, sharing our lives um, with our own flesh and with other ones, the glory of the Lord is going to be our rear guard. That's Isaiah 58. And when he cry out, we, he's going to say, here I am. When we cry out, he's going to say, here I am. So that's what I say to you today. When you cry out, he's going to say, here I am. Here I am, and he is right there at that throne of grace in heaven. Oh, he said, come with confidence to the throne of grace. So I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus that you're going to find him. He is more than enough. He is more than enough. You don't need to worry about your food. Yes, if he says store up some food, store up some water, uh, so that we can share, but we're not going to do it in fear because he's a good God. He can multiply the food like he did with the 5,000 people there, 12 baskets laid uh, left over, um, uh, let's see, five loaves of bread and two fish. He multiplied it. He can do that. He's doing things like that. He can multiply our money. Uh, he can multiply. He is the God of miracles. Nothing's impossible. So I declare to you that you have a new nature and that we're able to tell others they can have a new nature. It's in Jesus Christ. Greater things shall we do. We can bring others into the kingdom where they have a new nature. They don't have that sin uh, dominating them, drugs or whatever, pornography. They don't need to have that. They need to have an abundant life in Jesus. came to give you joy. In the world we have tribulation, but we are a good cheer. He has overcome the world. So I declare you are free in the name of Jesus. Study his word. Eat his word. Be that overcomer he's called you to be. I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hope to see you sometime. Uh, God bless you. Give your donations to OCN Broadcasting. Uh, tune on. Join in the name of Jesus. This is Good Soil and OCN Broadcasting. Dot com. Bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
to eat of where she might be nurtured for a short time. Oh, brother. Oh, we all have chances.